Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were discussing the module introduction to electromagnetic interference. And today's lecture we will be looking into what are the sources of electromagnetic interference in power electronic converters. In the introductory lecture I had told you that the main source of EMI in power electronics are the switched waveforms, the switch voltage and current waveforms. So, you might be recalling this buck converter which we have been using again and again to explain the design concepts. So, here uh, when you see these voltage waveforms, uh, this is the diode voltage waveform across this diode and uh, then this is the switch voltage waveform across the switch and this the current through the switch and the current through the diode. What we observe that all of them are switched waveforms that means they change abruptly very quickly. Now these waveforms are drawn for idle conditions that means we did not uh, uh, assume any parasitics for the passive components and also for these uh, power electronic devices uh, uh, we neglected all the non-idealities that these devices are having. Uh, it, these waveforms are drawn assuming everything is ideal. Even when we assume things to be ideal, then also if you do a uh, FFT analysis that means a fast Fourier transform of these type of waveforms, then uh, you will be seeing lot of harmonics at the high frequencies. So, if you were to draw the FFT, so let us say this is your uh, fundamental component which in this case is the DC component that it is going to be. Apart from that you will be having the switching frequency component and then as you go further then if you keep on doing the FFT you will see lot of high frequency components that may be present. Now previously you might have studied how to do FFT of square wave or uh, different types of waveform shapes and you know that that these fast Fourier transforms they depend on the shape of the waveforms. So here these waveforms the nature of these waveforms are similar to a square waveform. Now you also know that that none of the devices are ideal so it will have a fixed turn on and turn off time a specific turn on and turn off time. So, this voltages will be like this that means they will be having a finite time to rise and to build. These things we have discussed in detail when uh, we discussed the power semiconductor devices. So, uh, so, here you see that this is for the voltage is building that means it is turning off and uh, this is the turn on time. So, this is for the voltage and uh, then similarly when you see the current, the current also will take some finite time aim to rise and to fall. So, then when you do the FFT of uh, these that will be slightly different for the case when uh, you can trick the nature of the waveform is trapezoidal. So, from there what we see is that that as you turn on and turn off times changes and you may be having different spikes. So, all that will affect the frequency spectrum the components the high frequency components that may be present in the uh, in in your that particular waveform. So, then that is going to affect the EMI performance the electromagnetic interference problem will be affected by that. So, it may increase or it may decrease depending on the nature of the waveform and it will be also dependent on the turn on and turn off times. Now obviously, if your turn on and turn off times are very fast, they, it takes very quickly they happen the times are very short, then 
your uh, this frequency spectrum will have higher content towards uh, the range where your conducted EMI and radiated EMI uh, uh, range which is considered uh, for your EMI measurements. So, that is why uh, we need to be careful while you are uh, uh, choosing the gate resistors, designing the snubber. So, your turn on and turn off trajectories they affect the EMI or you can say that these transitions in the devices are a source of EMI. The switched voltage waveforms are a source of EMI and the amount of time they take to change they are sources of EMI. And further what you observe is that this has got a dV by dt and this has got a di by dt rate of change of current and rate of change of voltage. Now, higher the rate of change of voltage and higher the rate of change of current more will be the electromagnetic interference. So, they have to be limited to certain extent also uh, to limit the EMI issue. Further, the more the amounts of currents are there, the more the levels of the voltages, you are expected to have higher dV by dTs and higher Ti by dTs because then the switching is going to take place in a short interval of time with higher magnitudes. Let us say if you are changing from 500 volt to 0 volt as compared to when you are changing from 1 kilo volt to 0 volt. So, uh, then uh, 1 kilo volt con uh, converter which is uh, having uh, handling those voltages uh, may have higher EMIs. Of course, it depends on many things, but that is one of the factors. Now, further what we see is that, that if you your dV by uh, dt is going to play a role with this dV by dt will be associated some currents. What are those going to be those currents? So, if you have some parasitic capacitance let us say Cp, so they will be having the corresponding currents Cp dV by dt. Now, these are noise currents. So, this will lead to your noise in the currents. And, and if you have further parasitic resistances, if we call it as Rp and parasitic inductances Lp. So, then there will be drop because of that noise and that will lead to noise in voltage. Similarly, if you have these Di by Dt's, then your Lp Di by Dt that will lead to noise in the voltage. And then further because of that similarly you will be getting noise in current. So, what we observe is that it is not just uh, this uh, FFT of the waveform, it is also uh, affected by the parasitics that are present in the circuit in the different elements the parasitics that may be there. So, those parasitics because of this dV by dt and di by dt will uh, lead to noise in the currents and voltages and then those noise in, uh, in the currents and voltages are uh, going to affect the converters operation. It can affect the converters operation itself that means the source and the uh, receiver are the same inside the converter or they can uh, be conducted through different cables to other systems and so that will lead to interference in other systems. So, that is your this is the problem of conducted EMI will can take place because of these noise in voltages and currents. Now, I gave you a simple example of buck converter. Now, this is true for any con power electronic converter. For example, if you have this edge bridge converter, for this edge bridge converter also we had drawn these waveforms before. And uh, there we had seen that for bipolar PWM this will be the nature of the uh, voltage waveforms at the output VO it will go from plus VDC to minus VDC. And uh, these were the nature of the current waveforms over here and these IDC the DC bus current at this place was a 
switched current waveform. So, what we observe here again that we have switched voltage waveforms and switched current waveforms. So, this is true for almost all power electronic converters that you will be getting switched voltage waveforms and switched current waveforms at different different places and then those can lead to electromagnetic interferences both because of the nature of the waveforms the uh, the uh, components the frequency components that are present in it plus the di by dt's and dv by dt's associated with the transition in voltages and currents and the effect of parasitics they can lead to noise in voltages and currents and which can further lead to the problem of conducted emi and then these conducted EMIs, these noise voltages and currents, they can have their own electromagnetic wave which can also radiate through and can lead to the problem of radiated EMI. So, let us now look into what are the different parasitic elements that are uh, present in different components that are used in power electronic converters. So, this is your capacitor, electrolytic capacitor. So, uh, this is the equivalent circuit that you can uh, draw which shows some of the parasitics. So, ESR effective series resistance and ESL effective series inductance. Okay. Uh, now, these lead wires will have their own resistances and your inductance and uh, so uh, more these are higher these are. So, your the capacitance is deviating from its ideal behavior and it will become because of this ESR the capacitor will become lossy also more and more. Then uh, this is your resistor. So, resistor also um, uh, you will be having this kind of uh, equivalent circuit uh, a capacitor a parasitic capacitance in parallel and uh, you will have these. Uh, inductance because of the lead wires as well. Then inductor also it will have uh, the parasitics of uh, your C parasitic capacitance and also parasitic resistance R. So, what we observe here is that uh, what you think as R, L and C and that is how we uh, analyze the ideal circuit they none of it is really RLC it is all a combination of uh, every element whether it is R or whether it is L or whether it is just C they all have all three of them R, L and C all of them in any one of them. Then this is for your transformer the equivalent circuit the transformers equivalent circuit uh, you might be familiar there are different equivalent circuits of transformers uh, and you can refer it to primary, secondary, uh, different ways people show it and uh, it also depends on what is the frequency at which the transformer is designed and being used. The equivalent circuit also depends on that. So, here uh, uh, one equivalent circuit is shown uh, which shows your different resistances, inductances and capacitances that uh, are present in the transformer that could be used in a particular power electronic application. So, again we say it is a combination it is an RLC network that is um, actually present inside the transformer. Further your uh, power cord so these kind of cords uh, uh, you might be using and uh, we use these in our everyday life. So, power cords or cables they have to be used for any power electronic converter and uh, uh, for low frequency we just assume that they may be having just some small inductance or some small resistance and that is how we model it. But uh, in reality it, it is not so it is actually a uh, like a transmission line having all R, L and N, N, C present all of them together. Now, uh, in power electronic converters uh, the, uh, the cables or the cords may be carrying high frequencies and the high frequencies uh, voltages and currents may be switched voltages and currents. So, this transmission line model becomes all the way more relevant in that case. 
So, and uh, then though that uh, transmission line equivalent circuit then uh, can be further terminated by whatever is could be the impedance that will be seen by the cable or the cord at the other end. So, again we see all elements present R L, L and C present what uh, we could be just simply thinking as very small resistance or very small inductance. Now, there will be parasitics also present in your devices. Now, this uh, I had discussed uh, before also uh, when I discussed devices uh, with you and uh, then we had also seen how they affect the uh, switchings, uh, switching performances especially in case of MOSFETs and IGBTs. So, that uh, you might be recalling we had this that if it, it, in your IGBT let us say you have uh, capacitance uh, between all three of uh, the terminals. So, this is your gate terminal and a collector and emitter. So, between all of these three there were parasitic capacitances and uh, we also saw that when we discussed uh, snubber design that uh, those parasitic capacitances uh, with the other parasitic inductances that may be present in the lead wires or uh, between any two connections and of course, you will uh, always be having some parasitic resistance they form RLC circuit and then uh, they lead to uh, non idealities in the waveforms like you will be having ringing in the voltage waveforms. Uh, so, or uh, there may be ringing also in the current waveforms the, the during switches during turn off times. So, during turn off times the ringing in the voltages uh, at that time we took into account uh, these capacitances that are present the parasitic capacitance that are present in the transistors. Now, uh, uh, further if uh, you recall that uh, when I discussed diode then I said that that there is uh, junction capacitance in diodes. So, uh, this is uh, what was the diagram that was shown that uh, you have this uh, p n junction and this p n junction can be modeled like a capacitor it shows somewhat like a capacitive effect. So, then uh, uh, we can say that that there is capacitance in between uh, these two anode and cathode of the diode also and uh, that also will uh, lead to the problem of electromagnetic interference uh, because they all these parasitic capacitances they are providing additional paths for currents to flow in uh, different uh, positions in, in different parts of the circuit uh, which otherwise when you are analyzing in an ideal circuit you cannot observe them. Further in your power electronic design you will be using PCB you will be designing PCBs and on the PCBs all the components your uh, semiconductor devices and your inductors and capacitors all will be placed and then you will be putting tracks traces PCB traces to connect them. And uh, further you may be having sensors and uh, other controllers different elements may be present in the PCB. So, now, uh, when you look into the PCB what uh, uh, you will observe is that let us say this is the MOSFET here which is placed and there is a heat sink uh, uh, which is uh, pasted with the MOSFET. So, this heat sink is uh, usually grounded and uh, between this MOSFET and uh, this heat sink there will be a parasitic capacitance. Again, know that these are not capacitances which you can physically see these are getting formed because by default if you have any slight potential difference between any two points and you always have a dielectric medium uh, between those two points in uh, it may be air or something else. So, that will lead to a capacitive effect. So, there will be parasitic capacitances between whenever you have any uh, power semiconductor device being mounted on a heat sink. So, 
Uh, this is uh, a big source of your conducted uh, EMI because noise can your common mode noise can travel through it which we will be seeing little later. Then these uh, uh, your MOSFETs uh, when they are being connected or soldered to the PCB they will have their own uh, inductance small parasitic inductances because of these uh, lead connections the wires that will be there. And uh, then your PCB tracks will also uh, have their own parasitics like uh, this one let us say this is your completely is your one PCB track one large PCB track very wide. So, this PCB track uh, can uh, uh, be modeled as a transmission line having all R, L and C. So, and uh, more relevant as uh, transmission line modeling uh, uh, because you will be having switched voltages in currents that these uh, uh, traces will be carrying. Similarly, here also if you see here this is uh, some PCB trace uh, that may be present which may be connected to the gate drain and source terminal of the MOSFET and they will be carrying the switch component and those. Uh, um, your PCB traces then can be modeled as a transmission line. So, what we see is that the PCB itself is a big source of various parasitics. So, what uh, we thought of uh, when we analyzed uh, uh, an ideal circuit that uh, this is what the circuit is if, uh, having no extra RL and C. Uh, when we, you are going to design the converter, when you realize it in the hardware, there are numerous uh, sources which have got different types of parasitics and different types of non-idealities that are going to come into picture. And then they will lead to different types of noise, the noise that means a disruption from the ideal uh, waveform that you ex expect. Uh, from the ideal circuit analysis and then those noise will lead to your different interference problems. It can be conducted uh, electromagnetic interference or radiated electromagnetic interference both may be there. Then next is the ringing phenomena that takes place. This again we had discussed before also when um, uh, we talked about designing snubbers there I had shown you this ringing in the voltage while turn off. So, this is a switch voltage waveform um, across uh, uh, one of the devices and this is a switch current waveform so, this is a turn on process and the turn off process and during turn off what happens uh, I had explained you before that because of all the different parasitics that may be present you are actually forming an RLC circuit and then that transition the change will lead to a ringing effect in the voltage and then snubbers were used to limit uh, the peak of this uh, ringing voltage. And uh, also uh, we had uh, previously discussed this that when one transistor is turning off your one uh, or actually when it is turning on that is associated with the turn off of the diode. Any time any IGBT or MOSFET in one leg of a converter is turning on at that time on the other diode which was conducting before will be turning off and diode turn off is uh, associated with your reverse recovery currents and further we have all these different RLC which are present. So, we may be also seeing ringing in the current during turn on. Now, uh, these uh, ringings again further will have their own spectrum. So, what I uh, want to say is that that uh, your FFT if let us say this was your fundamental and then you had uh, all these different different harmonic contents when there was no uh, your uh, ringing effect was there that is going to be somewhat different when let us say you have these uh, ringing taking place. So, different 
spectrum you will be getting because of the ringing effect. All right. So, that also will further uh, uh, will contribute to the problem of EMI. So, the key points of this lecture are there are various sources of EMI in power electronic converters. The major source is the switched voltage waveforms and uh, there are different types of parasitics that are present all throughout a power electronic converter and uh, uh, plus uh, we may be also having the ringing effect. So, all these lead to your problem of EMI in power electronic converters. Thank you.